Hi, my name's Tim Silva. I'm standing in front of my work, Untitled Object. Um, this is a work which consists of a full life body cast, uh, cast out of timber mate wood filling putty. I, I guess I'm interested in, the, in using materials in my practice uh, which undergo some form of uh, transformation or change. And in this case, I've cast uh, the figure and I freeze it uh, to essentially demold uh, the object. And then it undergoes a process of transformation, which is uh, the figure slumping and deteriorating in some ways. It sort of uh, uh, undergoes a process of deformation under its own weight. For a while now uh, in my practice, I've been interested uh, in making objects that, that do undergo some form of transformation. Um, in, in a way, they're objects that uh, participate in the world um, uh, in real time, uh, rather than existing as sort of preserved objects. And, and this process is uh, laid out in, in the exhibition space in, in this particular work. In juxtaposition to this work, uh, upstairs uh, I have some work uh, which are cast tree burls, uh, cast from a pigmented uh, polyurethane. And a burl is a, is a growth of a tree which, uh, uh, when a tree gets damaged, it creates this sort of bulbous-like uh, deformity. And in that way, I see these uh, objects as uh, forms of trauma. And, um, and, and they sort of act as a nice anchor to, which is essentially this process of, of, of a body, uh, you know, uh, deteriorating in this way is, is sort of a, a process of trauma in itself. One of the things I've always been interested in is uh, applying these materials to, in a, in a way that they weren't designed to. And so obviously wood filling putty is made to feel, be worked on on a very small level. And so using such a mass of it to do it is, in a way, is uh, not doing what it's designed to do. Uh, rather than concealing cracks, it actually becomes an object that is of cracks. Um, and so <clears throat> I, work, I work with a silicon rubber mold making process. And essentially, we pack the mold. And it being quite a malleable material, I made the decision in this work that I would freeze the object, uh, which became a, a practical concern in, in order so we could demold it. It needs to be quite rigid to be demolded. But also, there's kind of a nice uh, uh, play into that in, in terms of uh, you know, uh, the frozen moment or you know, the frozen form. Um, and, and so we place it, we place it as, as a frozen object and then it, you know, as it defrosts, it starts to become malleable again. And, and that's where some of the sort of interesting sculptural elements begin to play themselves out. It's, for me, it's been interesting working with both uh, casting and photography because both of those uh, processes are ultimately the lifting of one surface and applying it to another. And what, what also becomes interesting in that, uh, in a discussion around uh, death, is that the uh, original applications of both of those uh, skills were applied to making death masks. I mean, there's a lot of discourse around photography, uh, you know, being a symbol of uh, the death of a real moment as it exists in life. And, and so there's sort of a nice tension between uh, a process that's unfolding and, you know, I, I guess it's, uh, you know, it's capture on film. And also the fact that the sculpture actually stabilizes at some point. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't, it, it, it becomes what it wasn't intended to be. A, a central concern of mine has uh, ultimately been that of the entropic condition, uh, which is, uh, I, I guess, particularly in an art discourse, is the, the theory that all, all uh, forms are in a process of uh, ultimate demise. And uh, a lot of the works I've done to date uh, play around with it or feed into that idea, you know. So there's ultimately some form of demise or that, that occurs uh, in, in the processes.